Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and today I'm going to show you how to make your own volcano. Uh, my kids are studying Earth and Space by Bright Ideas Press and one of the chapters is on volcanoes. Uh, there's a really cool diagram in the book which uh, my kids filled out which you could see the different sections of the volcano and so you study uh, volcanoes, uh, try to watch videos about volcanoes uh, erupting. We went to the library and we got some uh, books out about volcanoes. This one's super cool. It actually has a um, volcano <laughs> erupting. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, you do that to a toddler and they start giggling. Okay, so um, so we have uh, books about volcanoes, you can watch um, videos about volcanoes, and then the grand finale is to make your own volcano. And so the first thing we did in making a volcano, you could do, you could do this lots of different ways, okay? Um, one way is outside with mud. If you have a clay kind of feel, uh, it could be totally free. You put a, um, a pot bottle, a small pot bottle in there, and then you just bury it uh, with, um, with that mud, okay? So that's free to do it that way to make your volcano. Uh, now we have snow outside and our, uh, our dirt is sandy, so that doesn't work for us. Um, you can use uh, clay, self-hardening clay, uh, but if you use only clay, it ends up being super, super heavy like a brick, and you'll be ending up spending like $20 on clay, which you don't want to do. So my husband, the brilliant uh, guy that he is, uh, got this um, insulating foam sealant. So this is like a foam thing, and it sprays, and it foams up, and then it becomes hard so that underneath this volcano, it doesn't really weigh that much. And so we built a structure, and then we put the clay on top of that structure. And this is less than five bucks, okay? At a hardware store, is that where we got it? Okay, so uh, take a look at how my husband um, sprayed this stuff um, onto the edges of the um, a a small pot bottle and uh, you want to do it yourself do not have your children spray this because you can't you can't touch it with your hands okay so heads up about that uh, so go ahead and watch uh, how my husband uh, used this to form the shape of our volcano all right so I'm going to attempt to uh, make a volcano here since uh, the amount of clay necessary to make a cone around uh, our uh, volcano would probably weigh about 40 pounds. I've uh, decided to try to fill in the gap a little bit with some expanding foam. You can get the stuff at hardware stores or Home Depot or whatever. Uh, What's the name of the this is uh, great stuff. Ask your husband what expanding foam is, he'll know. Um, <clears throat> couple words of caution, you want to shake this very well. This stuff doesn't expand if it's uh, not well mixed. And the second thing is, don't get it on anything. Um, this stuff uh, is incredibly sticky and uh, very permanent. And so even if you get it on your skin, it'll be on your skin for about a week. So you'll want to avoid that. So I'm going to try to very carefully build up a small cone around here. And uh, we'll see how this works. Whoa. Yes, not for long. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to let this dry. That'll probably take probably, you know, the pile like this probably almost a day. But after that, kind of cut it into shape and then my wife wants to cover it with terracotta clay to make it look like an authentic coney-shaped mountain. And, uh, and then it'll be ready for uh, volcanic eruptions. Here we are a day later and it is hardened and it is fine to touch. What we're doing is, uh, what happened is it kind of fell and so we want to kind of shave it off so um, I'm letting my husband wield the knife in his hand. 
Yeah, so this kind of drooped a little bit. Might have been better for us to build it more slowly, you know, a layer at a time or something like that. But I think you can just take the excess, the serrated knife, and all right, and we can take these pieces and we can kind of set them yeah. in the holes and then cover it with terracotta clay and that'll cover up any mistakes. So um, this may take a few minutes, but... So you just grab some and you smash it on like that, okay? Just really grab soft. it with your fist and mash it on, oh, okay? This is soft. Really soft. They're all like hard chocolate. Okay, so gonna be like, what we're doing now is we are smoothing, we're done, so you can wash your hands. We're, I'm smoothing this uh, down to make it um, nice and smooth, but that was pretty fast. It took less than five minutes. It was super fun once the mold was there, and it was way easier to do than paper mache or anything like that. Um, Tell them that it's better if you flatten it. Yeah, and actually my daughter had a good uh, idea of flattening a piece of, um, of clay and then pressing it against it. So she was handing me pieces that were flattened wow. as well. So that's pretty cool. The soda bo bo bottle in there. Yeah. Yep, there you go. <laughs> we're going to let this dry for a couple days. We experimented several times in the kitchen, um, adjusting the different uh, measurements. Um, so uh, we started with three to four tablespoons of baking soda, three to four drops of dishwashing detergent, and uh, red food coloring. You want a lot of red food coloring, not just three or four drops, but a ton of it. But make sure that when you erupt your volcano, you have a lip around it. Don't just have it somewhere where it's going to get all over like your cream colored carpeting or something because that red will never come out. You might want to erupt your volcano outdoors for this reason. Okay, and then um, a half a cup of water, half a cup of vinegar. Okay, so those are the ingredients that we uh, started off with and it worked. Um, and so we added more red because we wanted it to be uh, more intense uh, in its uh, look. And also we removed a little bit of the baking soda because there was a lot of baking soda left over at the end of the eruption. So take a look at how uh, one of the ways that we experimented with uh, this formula. Okay, so uh, we uh, tried this several times in a separate bottle to uh, try to dial in the chemicals that we were going to use. The uh, book said that we should use three tablespoons of baking soda. Perhaps they were thinking it was a bigger bottle, I'm not really sure, but there was a lot of baking soda left over, so I reduced that to two in my case. Fortunately, the ingredients are pretty cheap, so you can do this many times until you've got it just right. So I put in two tablespoons of baking soda, and then they say to put in a, well, they said so many drops of, uh, of liquid detergent. It's really hard to get drops out of a liquid detergent thing, but they just don't want very much because it suds a lot. That's probably more than enough. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, finally we need to put some water into the bottle. I want to do that very carefully because I don't want to mix it a whole lot. I don't want a lot of suds in the bottle before we start. So I slowly pour in the water. I'm uh, 
leaning the bottle over so that the water runs down the side of the bottle rather than falling all the way into the into the mixture and churning up the soap. All right. Okay, now as a last step, we're going to actually make it explode. That was a half a cup of water and a half a cup of vinegar, so I guess it's one to one water to vinegar is the uh, bottom line, no matter what size bottle you're using. And uh, book called for four to five drops of red food coloring. I have no idea what kind of food coloring they uh, wanted, but uh, that left us with a very pinkish uh, result, and we wanted a bright red result, so I upped it to 20 drops. All right, uh, mix that up a little bit. Okay. That's red. <laughs> now, uh, not to stress to you how much you do not want to get this over anything, vinegar and food coloring is basically just stain, so whatever it touches, it's going to turn red permanently. So uh, you don't want it on your countertops if your countertops aren't made of marble. Um, and you, you know, if you have any grout or anything like that, it's going to turn that red. If you get it on your floor, it'll probably turn red. If you get it on your clothes, it'll turn red. If you get it on your skin, it'll turn red. Don't do it. <laughs> Put it on tablecloths, it'll get red. All right, so here we go. You got to do this pretty quick because I'm not even going to get all of this in there. That, uh... Ooh. <laughs> 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 and it keeps on flowing. Sort of like a Hawaiian yeah, volcano because well, Hawaiian volcanoes just ooze out lava, and that one's just oozing out lava, just out the top. As an aside, when you, if you make this out of terracotta clay, you should erupt it the same day you make it, because otherwise it starts cracking. Now, if it does crack, you can put more clay in the cracks themselves, but this is not something that's going to last forever, kind of similar to a mud one that you make outside, okay? If you want one that will last forever, make it out of paper mache, and it's a lot more more work okay so um, you, when we erupt this we might see some of the terracotta flaking off from where we filled in the cracks but it'll still be fabulous this explosion uh, so uh, let's take a look at how that is going to be since we can't tilt the entire volcano my husband is tilting the um, the funnel to the side so we get the water onto the side so it doesn't suds up for the water section. And here is our grand finale, the exploding of our very own volcano. And here we go. It's just a tiny bit more I can put. Woohoo! <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org. Thanks for joining us today.